Whatever level of cyclist you are, minor illnesses like colds are a right pain in the backside. Firstly, they'll leave you down in the dumps, but secondly, they'll affect your training. <sighs> so, when you're feeling that little bit better, how do you know when to start training again? Well, it's a tricky one, but here's a few tips. Generally, during a period of illness, your heart rate can be elevated by anything between five and 15 beats a minute, and sometimes more if you're particularly poorly. But this fact is of no use at all unless you've already established what your normal resting heart rate is. And once you find that out, it's a vital tool in establishing whether you're ready to train or not. Now, a good way of finding your resting heart rate, firstly, just use a heart rate monitor. These are now readily available. Secondly, is to check your pulse. Good ones here, or just here, and simply count how many beats you get within a minute. Now, the ideal time to test your heart rate is between five and 10 minutes after you get up in the morning. As a rule, if my heart rate was five beats or more above my normal resting rate, I'd either skip training or only train lightly. Now, it's a good idea following a period of illness to wait until your heart rate is within five beats of normal before you started to resume training. Now, if you're doing any sort of intensity or long endurance rides, it's best to wait until your heart rate is back to normal. But do bear in mind, if you're taking any sort of medication, that can cause your heart rate to fluctuate, sometimes higher and sometimes lower. And always make sure that when you do measure your resting heart rate, it's in a controlled environment, i.e. not too hot or not too cold. The common mistake to make is to wait a couple of weeks and train anyway, regardless of how you feel. It's easy to worry about the miles that you're perhaps missing out on and how much riding your mates are doing, but don't. Play the long game, see a doctor and get to the bottom of the problem. Remember also that if you have any underlying health issues on top of being sick, these could affect recovery times. Depending on how ill you were and what sort of illness you had will also depend on how long it takes you to recover. But a very good indicator of your state of recovery is simply how you feel. It's so important to be honest with yourself and believe you me, so many people aren't. So just say to yourself, how do you feel compared to normal? How are you feeling, Matt? I'm feeling great, actually. Oh. If you generally have that spring in your step and feel eager and fresh to tackle the job at hand, it's normally a good sign that you're ready. But don't panic and kid yourself if you're still feeling rough, because training during the recovery phase could do even more damage. But I think I'm ready to go. Head or chest cold? Now these are two of the most common things, ailments that cyclists face, but let's break each one down in turn. First off, a head cold or a simple sniffle. Now some pro riders can actually race with a head cold. I certainly have, and it can be done, but you do need to approach it with caution and certainly don't do any hard intervals or any long arduous rides. Be disciplined. Now for example, if you get any brown, green or yellow discharge, for example, it's definitely the time to stop because that could be a sign of infection. That was good, wasn't it? Chest cold. Oh, that was bloody brilliant. Jeez. That's one of the best on screen coughs ever. Chest cold. If you've got a cough like that, you certainly wouldn't be dressed in kit like me. You'd be at home in bed. That means no riding at all. It could mean one or two weeks off the bike, but it's well worth it. The old school mantra of sweating out a cough is just plain dangerous. See a doctor if you need to, but at the very least wait until the cough has completely cleared your chest before commencing any sort of riding. And to be honest, an insurance policy is to tag on another rest day after that just to be sure. And when you do start, make sure it's nice and steady. It can be very easy to go in feet first after an illness. After all, you've really missed your bike and you're mentally eager and fresh to get stuck in again. But act with caution. 
quite often the mind is actually a few steps ahead of the body in relation to what it can do and what it can actually tolerate. So build things up nice and steadily. When you're riding, keep the gears low, distance is low and the intensity low. And that will give your immune system to build itself back up to what it was before. So above all, be patient, listen to your body. You won't regret it. Remember, if you like this video, make sure you like it. And for our video on how to prevent illness, click here. For other how-to videos, click down here. And to subscribe and be a fan of GTN, <laughs> GTN! <laughs> anyway, it's absolutely free. Don't know what you'll find at GTN though, who knows?